be able to feel that rhythm you know, before getting out there on, on Sunday and getting one kind of last opportunity to play as a group together. Uh, and definitely was a confidence booster. It's cool to get down there. Yet, I don't know how many plays that drive was in the call period, but it was good to sustain that drive and finish it on the right note, especially after kind of a shaky start to the day, uh, being able to pick ourselves back up and, and lock in for those periods was awesome. So a lot of guys touching the ball. felt like I was seeing it well and feeling it well and, uh, you know, it was coming together at the right time. You had that one early play with Traylon out, out cut to, to the sideline that was a little bit high. And then I saw him <clears> later talking with him and kind of gesturing. Were you discussing that play and what, what happened on that? Uh, just the, how I thought uh, we, we could have detailed the route. And, um, you know, he, he felt one thing and I felt another. And we just got to watch the tape. And when it comes up next time, we, we, we are both expecting the same thing. So I could have made him, made him right and at least give him a chance to go up and get it. Uh, but just think based on how a corner played it, that we could have kept it a little higher. But uh, you know, it's, it's, he's got to be confident and, and fast in his decisions, and I got to put the ball where it needs to be. And both of us, I think, could have been a little better there. Well, Did he indicated maybe play a handful of uh, series on Saturday. What did you like to accomplish here, and uh, how do you feel like the readiness level is a couple weeks out from the season? I think we feel really ready. I think like we had the game plan for New Orleans given to us yesterday, like the intro to the base down stuff. And it's cool to see a game plan and be like, yep, yep, yep. Like, pretty much feel like you can go out and play that day. Um, so I feel like we're all in a really good spot uh, with our knowledge of you know what's at our hands uh, playbook wise. And really do think we're in a really good spot. But I think in terms of goals for this weekend, it doesn't, doesn't change. Just do my job, not trying to do anything too crazy. And uh, you know, just keep leading us and keeping drive sustained and making the right calls. So I'm excited to go out there and have another opportunity to, to be clean with, with our starters. Tyler Boyd about, back uh, into the, the next step for you, maybe being get us out of bad plays, you know, when you're up in the line and so forth. I guess, uh, how do you feel your progress is coming along, and what are the most talented things you're I think it's like when you're given those tools to do those things for the first time, like you could second guess yourself pretty easily. Like when you don't have the confidence in the background of doing it uh, in your in your past, so. Uh, but I think I know I have, I have a good enough handle on to know, you know, when things are, are messed up and what could possibly get us out of that situation. And I think game plan wise, Cali will do a great job too of letting me know what my issues are on that play. And I think it'll be more of like, a, hey, if we get this specific look on this, it's not going to work. Let's think about getting into something else. So having that kind of catalog of, of things to get to based on whatever personnel is out there on the field, based on whatever the coverage we think it is, is. Um, I think I, I feel comfortable doing that, and I'm looking forward to getting to that point where it comes a lot more natural. Did you say you said one of the things that he likes about you uh, that makes you makes him feel like you're that guy is, you know, your ability to bounce back after making a mistake. And he talked about the direct communication that he has with you. What is it that makes you able to bounce back and put that away and come back and do what you need to do? Uh, I think it probably goes back to earlier in my career when I couldn't do that. Like as a high schooler and young at college athlete, I think I was very easy for me to let my past affect you know, what's coming up in the future. So um, I was very emotional. I was, you know, every time I made a bad throw or a bad decision, I was really down on myself and made me press and, and act a certain way. But I feel like, you know, towards the end of my college career, I was able to f phase that out and understand that it's only going to hurt me and to just keep that neutral attitude with, with every play. So, um, you know, we don't, we don't want to mess up uh, much, but when we do, we want to be able to come back with the confidence and the ability to go and uh, make the play, whatever that may be, the next play. He said he thought you'd audible by the end of the season about 20% of the time. Do you have an estimate for probably what you audible last year? Uh, I couldn't tell you right now, no. Uh, I don't know. I mean, by audible, I don't know exactly what he means, like with attached can, uh, you know, cans or whatever. But. He was talking about check, checking out. Trouble. Yeah, it was probably less than that, probably. Well, when it comes to Tyler Boyd, and we spoke on him before, but kind of his transparency, and I know even talking with wide receivers on the side after a play, he said he's not shy to vocalize that. How much has that helped in certain situations, maybe not only with you, but these other wide receivers in that room? Yeah, that's the only way we're going to get better. We can't just, you know, head nod and, yep, we're good. We'll get it next time. we got to talk through it and see what details can be tweaked to make sure that we're more consistent with it. So those guys have done a really good job of communicating with what they see and feel. And I'm being honest with them, right back to them. And 
we're gonna we're trying to find that middle ground, and when we get the opportunity to watch it afterwards, we we can see who may be right, who may be wrong. But uh, it's just good to have those open dialogues and healthy dialogues with each other, uh, so that we can get to the efficiency level we we want to get to. Did you always getting Boyd back into the fold as a veteran player, a guy who knows this offense really well, like he's, you know, pretty involved today? How much do you feel his presence every time he's in there? And I guess not having him and now having him like. Make you appreciate him just a little yeah. bit more. You say TB, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I told him today I was happy to have him back, and um, it was funny. I think the first, the only ball on the ground in RBAs was my first throw to him, and I was like, shoot, uh, might need to dial back up with him. But I felt him, you know, the rest of the day, and he was right where I wanted him to be. And I feel like uh, we got a really good connection, and um, we just got to keep working. He's a special player. He's been in this league for a long time for a reason. He's got a great understanding of this offense, and you know what works and what doesn't, and how to get us into the best spots to, to succeed uh, in, with whatever he's doing. So he's been a lot of fun to play with, and it's, it's good to have him back. He's been pretty optimistic about DeAndre and his hopes of being back for week one. You stay in contact with him, and you feel like what you guys built last year up until the time he left this year, you can kind of hit the ground running? Yeah, no, it's good to have um, you know him here and, and rehabbing to get back uh, and better for, for week one. So uh, I, I was texting him when, when he was away for a little bit, and. Uh, and I just know that he's working his tail off to get back and be ready to play. Um, but it's, again, going to be another piece that, uh, you know, when someone's hurt for a little bit, it's, it's sometimes hard to remember, like, the contributions that they were able to make when they were there. So we're excited to have him back. And I know he's going to be a big-time player and piece in this offense. Brian said in a lot of ways for, for you to make the biggest strides now is about the mundane stuff and kind of mastering the mundane stuff. You kind of agree with that, and it's not very gl glamorous for an NFL quarterback with picture of the big plays and all of that. But w where are you with the mundane stuff, and is it hard at all to keep focused on on the smaller stuff? For sure, no. I'm, I feel really good about it, especially with you know reads and not passing up a read to get to what we're really trying to dial up. I think I've done a better job of just taking something if it's open on the first go around, and um, even though I might think based on how it's the play's developing, that that bigger shot might be open as well. Um, you know, it's, it's good to have the conversations and watch the film for when that window does get closed and how everything else get closed. And, you know, the, your one option that you had in the beginning was the only one you really had. Um, so understanding that and just taking what they give me. But it's definitely t uh, difficult at times to, like, feel, you know, when's the right time to try to get out of the pocket and make a play or, or try to stick one in there when if the coverage might be a little tight. And that's why I've just been you know, playing with that throughout camp and feeling like what situations when they present themselves are appropriate for those things. Um, I think today in the red zone period, like we talk about never taking any sacks in the red zone. And I feel like in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking that and I'm going through one, two progression and I had a throw away. But in reality, I bet when I watched the film, guys were holding up for a really good amount of time out there and I could have progressed to that third progression. So it's just going back and forth and feeling when the opportunities are there to try to make those plays and to stick in the pocket or to stick those throws in there, and when it's you know, the time to just take your medicine and, and move on. What are you that, looking um, to he said that Brian said that Tony and Tajay are two of the best backs he's ever seen in terms of pass protection. As, as a quarterback, how much do you appreciate running backs who will stick their head in there, pick up a blitzer for you? It's awesome to see. You know, it fires everyone up in the team room when that, when that tape goes on. and. Everyone knows who the back Scott, and or he's able to scan across for his guy, and then just and stick somebody. It's, I don't. They're not the biggest guys in the world, but they're strong and they're aggressive and they're uh, explosive, and they're able to get up underneath those guys and and you know make them feel it. So uh, that's awesome to see. It's, it's it gets me even more fired up than them ripping a big run. You know, it's it's them their sacri sacrifices and contributions for the greater good of the team, and that's what it's all about. Well, what are you looking to accomplish specifically with the O line in those starter reps you guys get Sunday? Uh, I think just efficiency, like what I was saying before, being able to be on the same page and knowing the different types of looks that we can get. Um, you know, we're, we know that we might get a variety of looks, especially on third down. So being able to um, making sure that we know kind of what their packages are and them to be locked in on their combinations. And I want to be able to, you know, feel good back there on third down, dropping back and or whatever we might have uh, at our disposal. So I think it'll be a good opportunity for them uh, with the variety that we think we might be facing. And um, yeah, I mean, how about points? That's what we want at the end of the day. So that's what I'm expecting, and that's what uh, we want to get. When you do have the kind of freedom to make checks at the line of scrimmage last season, or even at Kentucky, that you do now? Uh, a little bit. I mean, we would talk like, hey, if we get zero, this is our like menu of answers, or 
what you can get to this versus this. But um, uh, I wasn't doing much in terms of like if I felt there was a pressure into the run, like getting something else up or uh, what have you. But yeah, a little bit of last year, not much in college. Yeah. When you are dropping back, like you said, and going through your progressions, and you feel the pockets a little bit cleaner. How have you noticed that progress over the last couple of weeks out here at practice when the front five has kind of started to really set itself? I think it's just their knowledge and their ability to continue to understand our defense and what we play and the different types of games that they're playing up front and the different pressures that we're getting and them to just kind of know it's coming before it even happens sometimes. So when they have that confidence and after they've gotten the reps that they have against this defense, uh, it feels, it feels uh, a lot better back there and they've been doing a good job of uh, holding up their guys. So credit to them and we just got to make sure that you know, we're working every week to know those things in a week's time to get ready for those Sunday games. So, uh, you know, credit to them. It felt really good back there and we just got to keep working. And has said that he welcomes pressure and he likes pressure because it means there's expectations. Mm -hmm. For you, uh, what's your take on, on that? Is that something that you welcome as well? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like pressure, like blitzes. I was like, yeah, we love it. We we'll, we'll smack, <laughs> no, smack him in the mouth and more, more, more space on the field. Yeah. No. Um. No. Pressure is a privilege, and I feel like I've always felt that. Um. I think the more that you're focused on what other people are going to be thinking about you uh, based on how you act and what the outcome of your actions are, then uh, the more that it can weigh on you. But I think I, I'm just more solely focused on myself and the people here. And I know as long as I'm just doing my best to, to work to get myself to the level I know I can get to, then that's all I can do. So um, pressure's, be, pressure's cool. Pressure means there's a lot of eyes on you and there's a lot of people um, you know, counting on you to succeed. And uh, I welcome it with, with open arms. Sold out yeah, uh, they did a couple of drops. I think we've sold thousands of bottles so far, so I don't know the exact number, but awesome. Just a really, really cool thing. I, I don't think they're planning on dropping any more, so that's pretty much it. Uh, but they both sold out in a pretty fast amount of time, so yeah, yeah I'm really excited. I don't have a lifetime supply of the cologne, but um, I might have to add that to the contract. But yeah. I, got, I just got one bottle right now. Hopefully I can make it last for a week, but <laughs> no, um, yeah, it's good stuff. You guys, you, I mean, you smelt it, obviously, but yeah, a lot of fun. I noticed you talking to Hassel back when he was here last week. I know he's kind of raved about you in the past. What's the connection like with him? How much of you kind of follow, did you follow his career? Yeah, he was my, I don't know the exact title they used at the Combine, your, our like mentor slash group leader. So he was my group of eight quarterbacks or whatever. He was our guy leading us around Indy the whole week. So he was a great guy to get to know then. and. Um, Someone you know, my dad's been in contact with, and I've just kind of been in contact with throughout my career. So, um, really respect him and the knowledge he's got for the game, and uh, it's always great seeing him and talking ball. Thanks. Appreciate you, Thanks, Thank you guys. Will. Was that right?